was difficult to write. A woman in her late 20s named Kim Wayne was looking blankly at the window. She just got back from the hospital a few minutes back and since then she was sitting there. She didn't even change her clothes. Her husband Kim Tae-yong on the other hand was in the washroom. The man in his early 30s was freshening up while being happy. Why wouldn't he? After all, after months of trying, he was finally going to be a father. His wife was expecting after having miscarriages for more than two times. But contrary to Tae-yong's feelings, Wayan was feeling numb. She wasn't feeling any happiness. Her mind was stuck in the conversation of her father and her father's sisters, which she accidentally heard while visiting her father's house from her office. Oh, how she wished the conversation she heard was just a lie. But alas, it was her life's bitter truth which she was unaware of before. And now, now that she became aware of that bitter truth, which neither could she swallow nor could she forget, she felt as if she was burning, as if she was getting suffocated. A shiver ran down her spine, remembering the words she heard her father, Mr. Lee, uttering to her aunt, Mrs. Shin, almost three weeks ago. Wayne is very happy, I see. Winnie always loves her same as Eva. Now, Wayne's husband also loves her a lot, just like Eva's husband loves Eva. Obviously, both my daughters got a good life partner and a stable career. My only regret is where Eva chose to succeed me in my company, Wayne chose to work under another company. I wished she also chose my company only. Just like you chose different stream than business, she too chose to work differently. Anyways, all this became possible only because of you, Leah. Because if you didn't give me the idea of telling Eva's mom that she is having twin daughters instead of one daughter, that either we had to leave Wagon in an orphanage or we had to... Tell Eva's mom the truth of you and me having an affair which resulted us into having wagon. After all that time your husband was abroad and you were staying with us. So we couldn't lie that you were carrying your husband's child. And thank God Uni didn't never really doubt wine's birth because of which we still can continue our affair. A small laughter resonated from Mr. Lee's mouth. Obviously, my dear sister, thank God, Eva's mom is innocent and Leah, I missed you during these three months. Oppa, I missed you too. I wasn't interested in going, but you know, when Ray and his father both said for vacation, I couldn't say no. Anyways, Uni is innocent, but more like a dumb one. Both siblings burst into laughter, oblivious to the fact that their daughter, Wagen, had already heard everything they said. Sure, it wasn't intentional for her to ever stop, but she did eventually, and it successfully crushed her soul. That day, she didn't have the courage to confront her father and her aunt, no, no, her biological mother. So like a coward, she ran from her father's house with a trembling body and locked herself in the washroom for hours. She cried her heart out that day. Only when Thayang came back from office at late night, he discovered whole house was drenched in darkness and his wife passed out in the washroom. That night, Thayang panicked like no other time. While patting her cheeks and calling her name several times, he picked her up in a bridal style and placed her on their bed. He was about to take her to hospital when she opened her eyes, after he sprinkled water on her face. Then for the first time, he saw her eyes that much broken as if she was an amnesic patient who lost 
every single memory of their life. My whole life was a lie, the young. My whole life. That was her exact words. After which she again burst into tears and hugged him tightly, hiding her face into his chest. I'm dirty, the young. I'm dirty. I'm product of a nasty affair between two married siblings. I'm product of, I'm product of forbidden, unethical, nasty desire. At first, her words didn't make any sense to him, but he hugged herself tighter to him as her wailing was too much painful for him to bear. Later, when Wagen calmed down a bit, she narrated everything to him in detail. Shock was an underestimate what he felt that time. He never imagined his father-in-law would have an affair, let alone with his own sibling. On top of that, the revelation that Viking was her aunt and father's biological daughter. It was too much for him to take, so he couldn't even imagine what Viking was feeling that time. Maybe like him, she was feeling disgust towards Mr. Lee, Mrs. Shin. But one thing. He swore that he wasn't feeling disgust seeing her because in all of this, there wasn't any fault of her. How could two related siblings become engrossed in pleasure that they became so careless and resulted in conceiving a child together was beyond the young's knowledge. Because the act was not only morally or spiritually wrong, it was scientifically wrong too. Wyan could have born with complicated genetic disorders, but thankfully it didn't happen. Though Wyan still had to pay for her biological parents' deeds by being born with extremely low immunity power, she had to live most of her being sick. She was restricted to do many activities or eat some specific food. In future, too, she would need to follow them. And the trauma of being an illegitimate child, along with the product of, would always haunt her. Maybe, maybe that's why some truth should be always hidden. Because upon discovering the truth, it gives nothing but unbearable pain. Why? With a jerk, she looked at her husband, who called her with louder voice than usual. Huh? I'm calling you for a while now, but you were not responding. You were just looking outside. The freshly showered man asked her while few drops of water was visible on his hairs, which he was trying to wipe with his towel. I I was just. You needed anything? Nothing much. I was just asking. Do you want to eat anything? Dinner time is far away. But in your state, you must be wanting to snack on something heavy before dinner, right? He told her while throwing the towel on the sofa. He was about to take his phone from the nightstand, but a frown appeared on his face after seeing her remain in silence. This was not her. She shouldn't remain silent after seeing him throwing used towel on the sofa, nor after mentioning her state. This alarmed Thea. After getting the news of him becoming a father, he was so overjoyed that he didn't closely study his wife's face. He assumed she too would be overjoyed like him because they were praying to hear this news for few months now. He looked at her face, whose face was blank instead of any happiness or excitement. He got worried seeing her state. So he went towards her and sat in front of her while gently taking her hand in his. What happened, Vaya? You seem to be a little lost. You, I don't want to have this baby here. I don't. Tears left her eyes, whereas Tim froze at his face. Seconds later, a whisper-like voice left his mouth. What? I don't want to continue this thing. I want abortion. Why? This was planned, right? We were trying for months. Th- then how? Because because my dirty flesh shouldn't be passed on, Thayang. We shouldn't burden a pure soul with my foul genes. Nasty family tree. I told you numerous times from the past few weeks. 
right that you are not dirty why and your biological parents deeds do not define you the lady who brought up you and your sister must have been too innocent to see the nasty doings around her but but she had brought you two sister up with high morals you didn't turn out like your father sweetheart so it's okay You are not understanding the young my nasty birth will impact our child's life it will i believe this is the reason why almighty snatched our previous children from us the young just looked at wayne who was breathing heavily wayne i feel you were just over well now the incident from few weeks ago now this news that you were one month alone Everything is taking a toll on you. So take some rest, okay? Take a nap. Then you will able to think clearly. Saying this, he wiped her tears with his thumb. I am in my right state of mind, Thayang. I really want a boy. We will not have abortion, Bayan. I am sure you will understand my words later. Now sleep. He got up from the bed, Thayang. He was not un. I am understanding everything clearly again. Sleep now. Take rest. You have responsibilities to fulfill both as a office worker and as a mother. I can understand your lack of will to become a wife now, but your other responsibilities won't. So take rest for now. Saying this, he switched off the lights and left from the room, leaving her motionless on the bed while tears again fall from her eyes. I shouldn't take responsibilities as a mother, Thayang. I shouldn't. A week later. Thayang entered his room with a plate full of rice topped with fried eggs, fried potatoes, carrots, and seasoned with sesame seeds, green chilies, and soy sauce. A dish, his wife's all-time favorite. See, Vyan, what I brought for you. I know you are hungry, so you won't be able to say no to this. With a bright smile on his face, he told her. But his smile immediately faded after hearing her cold tone and words. I don't want to eat, Thayang. Please leave from here. For how many days you are going to behave like this, Vyan? I agree that I can never understand the feelings, the trauma you went through, still going through after knowing your father's truth. But it doesn't mean that you will become careless with your health, with our unborn's health. Please try to understand a little. Take care of your health. You are not alone anymore. Why you are not understanding, Thea? We should uh, abort our child. We shouldn't bring a child who would share my flesh, Thea. They would be tainted like me. They. Shut up, Vaigan. He angrily placed the plate on the night table and went towards her. Can't you, for once, see the sign? You came out perfectly without any genetic disorder. By God. Grace, our child would too be born without any genetic disorder. Even if it didn't happen, would you love our child less because they would be specially evil? Vaiyan looked away from him. Tears brimmed both of their eyes. Don't think, Vaiyan, that I'm forcing my decision on you. If the circumstances were different, if your reasons. You deciding to abort our baby was different, like you not being ready to raise a child now, or your work pressure, or your health, or anything. Then I wouldn't be straight out telling you to change your mind, Vaiyan. I would have thought from your point of view too. Even if it would shatter me to agree to abort our baby, I would have said yes to you. If if only your reason was justified. But now, Vaiyan, right now your reason behind wanting to abort our child is baseless. He took her hands in his and gently placed a peck on the back of her palms. She didn't look into his eyes. Don't snatch your happiness because of the deeds of your biological parents, love. Don't do this. 
I still remember how shattered you were after we miscarried our two unborn babies. Both miscarriages were rent your fault, but you kept blaming yourself again. Even after me, your doctor, our family, all of us told you it was not your fault. You kept believing otherwise. It was very difficult for us to bring back you to daily routine. To bring back your smile, do you think you would be able to live peacefully, realizing you aborting our baby was just for some baseless reason? This time she looked at him but didn't say anything to him. Fresh tears fall from her eyes. She gripped his hands tightly and tried to stop her tears, but all went in vain. He freed his hand from her and embraced her tightly. She cried louder while clutching his t-shirt and placing her head on his chest. He patted her back and caressed her hairs.